Hey, it's Terry Bain and your my pal Janet E. Johnson. Today we're going to do a little wrap up of TEDx Detroit 2019. Um, but before we get into that, let me introduce you to the one, the only, the lovely, the talented, the social media marketing maven Janet E. Johnson, where today the E has to stand for entertainment because that's the E in TED. Most people don't even know Ooh, that. Oh, it is. I didn't know that. No, See, I did like not know that. There you go. Entertainment. No. Well, and ask the I... the obvious question, Janet E. Johnson. Ask the obvious question. <sighs> ask the obvious question? Yeah. The obvious what, question being, well, what the hell's the T and the D What's T and D? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. So what does it stand D, for? I have no idea. The D is design and the T is technology. So oh, if you look at technology, sense. entertainment, and design, those are the three areas that primarily drive innovation in our world, right? So kind of a fun little thing. So that's that is cool. Yeah. Is so that's how it came up. What's the X? Oh, so the X just refers to it's an independently produced event, right? So Ted, in their infinite wisdom, said, really like to get more people to experience this, but we're not going to put on 100 shows a year. Right, so Ted manages Ted, Ted Med, Ted Women, and I think there might be a fourth that they do conferences on, but all the rest of Ted Talks have that X, and that X means that anybody can put on their own Ted event, right? So you in Minneapolis have like four or six events a year, right? So TEDx Minneapolis does a pretty good job of staying active, they have like one big event every year, but then they have smaller events called salons where instead of a full day of talks um, where you might have 24 to 30 different performers or speakers or artists or musicians or what have you, um, they might just have like a two hour evening session where you see a couple of speakers and maybe a couple of videos and get people together. So it's a really good way to keep the community engaged. Okay. Um, interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. So tell me, okay, so Terry oh. actually spoke at this event. It's true too. That's true. Yes. So Terry we will, but we will put that, that YouTube video in the show notes. So we will make sure that we get that in the show notes so you guys can watch. And it's only three minutes. So you guys can handle three minutes of your time to so watch Terry on you, stage. If you watch this long, you'll actually be able to watch that. <laughs> It's probably more entertaining. Uh, well, so Terry did a great job with it. So tell us about uh, how this, you've been in charge of TEDx for many years now. How long have you been helping with running this TEDx so, Detroit? TEDx Detroit. So my pal, Charlie Wahlberg, and we had Charlie and Janet on the show doing a TEDx wrap up a couple, three years ago. Um, Charlie got wind in 2009 that Ted was doing this independently produced event thing. Um, and he called Ted and he talked to them and they said, yeah, man, you're the guy, run the show, do it. And he's like, okay, well, what do I have to do? And they said, whatever you want. And he said, who gets to be on the team? And they said, whoever you want. And he said, where can they do it? And he said, wherever you want. And he's like, oh, so I'm kind of in charge. And they're like, now you're catching up. So he hung up that call and he called me and said, we are putting on a TED event. And I said, sweet, who's Ted? Because I don't Oh my gosh. Ted. It's like, you know, it's a long time ago, right? You think about the, the way the culture has well, changed. 10 years. Right? Yeah. It's the, we just did number 11 last, last month. So in November 6th with, I don't know, 25 or 2,600 of our closest friends. It's a pretty, pretty decent sized crowd to spend an entire day sitting and listening and being inspired. It was really, really a phenomenal day yet again. It is so much so that uh, we're working on number 12 already. <laughs> wow. Easy. It's a volunteer effort, man. And I'll tell you, it's a volunteer effort of love. Um, but it's cool, right? It's a great yeah. thing for the city. It's a good thing for the community. It's a good thing for the people that show up. Yeah, yeah. And how many people attend typically? Um, well, like I said, 2,500 this year. 2,500, 2,600. 
And did you have a full house then this year? We did not because we were in a fairly large venue that seats close to 4,000. Um, so I think a couple of challenges. One, I don't think, let me rephrase, we absolutely did not have it planned out far enough in advance. Okay. Right. So we had, uh, we fell for the same damn trick again, man. We've got a particular venue that we want to work with and um, they string us along every flipping year. So three years in a row, we've kind of waited to, to do something with them and we didn't announce our date. Um, Early enough, I suppose. the venue, right? So people are really interested in when's Ted, when's Ted, February, March, April. And we didn't actually announce our date until August this year, especially which when you find out that the event, we announced August 13th and the event was November 6th. So it's not a lot of yeah. runway. That's less than Got three it. Um, which so who talked? Um, what, or first off, how many talks are there and what types of talks were there? So I would tell you, and I don't have my cheat sheet right yet. Um, but they were probably, let's call it 28 different performances. Oh, wow. So the most uh, ranging anywhere from three minutes and 13 seconds on the short side to close to 22 minutes on the long side. The gentleman that had 22 minutes is a fellow named Rob Paulson. You would know Rob Paulson uh, better because you might remember Animaniacs, the TV show where he played Yakko, and he also did the voice of Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. So he's a voiceover actor. Ah. Uh, you're looking at me like you have no idea, so let me try this one, you might know. Uh, a little show called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I believe oh, yeah. he played Michelangelo and Donatello. There you so go. Two different voices in that. He also did the voice of Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron. So it was pretty interesting. In the different points during his talk, he broke into all of these voices. And it's just a trip to, to see the living embodiment of the cartoon characters that you well, learned. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. It was pretty neat. It was pretty that's neat. cool. Huh. And it's an amazing story. Super cool, dude. Um, another person that people would know and recognize, a young lady known as the rehab addict, Nicole Curtis. She dated the gold guys guy when I was client, when he was my client. Seriously? I know, Nicole. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a trip. Jack. That is funny. She's okay. from here, but she was doing a lot of rehab work inside of Minneapolis. So yeah. Yeah. She, she had moved out there at one point and started doing stuff and she's done stuff here and she's. What'd she talk about? Um. I didn't watch her talk, so I have no idea. Shoot. Okay. Because I, I know will... she's had a nasty battle with her son, so I don't know if anything came up of that story or anything, but interesting. Okay. I will, interesting. Uh, since you have a vested interest, I will make sure that you get the video. All right. There you go. Yeah. The interesting. Videos are, the videos are coming out now. Um, so those were the two, like, known type people. Um, the rest of it is, you know, the idea is to have a nice mix of people, you know, and follow and care about and people that you would sure. never hear from otherwise. So, yep. you know, one of, one of my favorite talks and the one that kind of moved my daughter, who also attended, and as did my wife, um, was a young lady from northern Michigan who owns a flower shop. And she talked about you know, the, the, in your life, you need to have the focal the filler and the flare, right? And so when you're making a floral arrangement, you have the focal flowers or flowers, you have the filler and you have the flare that stands out. And I, I really like the analogy and what you talked about there. Um, we had a dude named Louis Resto and Louis is a music producer, most famous for um, doing a lot of the production on Lose Yourself by Eminem. And he came out with a keyboard and basically tried to put everybody into a trance. It was a very unique experience. I'm guessing it won't play as well on video as it did in the audience. It's kind of like when you go watch a concert and um, you can feel the energy in the room. 
but when you look at it on TV, it's just, or rewatch it on your phone. It's just not the same thing. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was interesting. There was a couple of medical talks and very scientific -y. Uh, yep. There were a couple of, uh, we had a couple of spoken word poets. We had this a group of teachers from Detroit, five or six black male teachers get up and do some educational rap. That was pretty cool and pretty moving. You know, it's fun to see the crowd just get into stuff. Um, your pal here talked a little bit. He uh, told a story about casting a positive stone. Um, it's the idea of the ripple effect. And how do you, I shared eight ideas of how you can leave people better than you found them, right? What can each one of us in this room do today to leave a positive impression on the folks that we uh, interact with? with the idea that hopefully they'll do the same, right? That's the ripple effect. That's interesting because I just saw the Mr. Rogers movie. It reminds me of that. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. He's a great example of that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So it was, I mean, it's just, it's just a day, right? It's yeah, just yeah, it's a, yeah, but it's obviously quite a, you know, you guys only have the one in Detroit then? You said yeah. we have multiple in Minneapolis, but you have one in Detroit. Okay. How yeah. do people become what's the process to become a speaker for TEDx? So a couple of ways. One, if you're like super interesting and doing something cool, we'll find you. Got it. If you're, if you're doing something that people need to know about, we're going to come get you. Um, otherwise, there's an application process. And you fill out an application online, and that normally opens four months or so, five months before the event itself. Um, so specifically, though, uh, the criteria for TEDx Detroit is you have to either be from here, live here, or have some significant tie here, right? Maybe you went to college or university in the area. You know, you can you can live in California now, but if, you, if you grew up here, yeah, that's that's a requirement, right? So Does Charlie pick those speakers, or you, or? Okay. Charlie, Charlie picks 90% of them. Okay. Right? So okay. There's a couple of people on the board that say, hey, this person's got to be on the stage. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't happen. Well, that's interesting. Well, that's a pretty cool uh, venue. It looks like, a, I mean, 2,500 is a big number. So to get that many people in one spot, I mean, that's a project and a half. <laughs> It's, it's, it takes some time. It takes some effort, right? It takes a lot of dedication. We had, we have 14 or 15 board members and we had close to 200 volunteers over the course of the day. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a Herculean effort to be sure. Wow. Definitely. Well, cool. Well, we definitely will put up, we can put up the channel for the YouTube. We'll put up Terry's uh, make sure that you can uh, view what Terry talks about, because that sounds very interesting. I mean, you talked about eight things in three minutes. So yeah, you covered a lot in three minutes, it sounds like. I do, I do, I do. You've met me, right? I, I move <laughs> quick, man. I move quick. So yeah, awesome. it was fun. And it's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you already. Right, so. I'd love to attend if I were there, but we're in a little bit different states. So yeah, definitely. Um, sounds awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Terry. And for those of you listening, if you want to go to back past episodes and learn more on business growth, networking, social media, you can find that at businessgrowthtime.com slash podcast. And then also we have a group on Facebook. You can join us and that is business or sorry, it's yeah, businessgrowthtime.xyz. I almost messed that up. If you guys have listened to the show in the past or this episode and you appreciate what we are doing, we would love to have a review on iTunes. We would greatly appreciate it. And we love that you're listening. Listening. Any last words, Terry? Oh, you know what? Go out and do something good for somebody, right? Just start now. Do it often. It's amazing. The world needs more positive energy, and it starts with you. So, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.